Hello and welcome to the next session, session three, content creation based on a social media strategy. So let's start with a recap and why it's important to understand what type of content you'd like to share on social media. So first of all, let's talk about the importance of a social media strategy as we talked about in the last session. Uh, the main importance of the social media strategy is that it identifies your target audience and it gives you direction to your use of social media, which is very important with a tool that is so dynamic as uh, social media is. Now, content differs depending on uh, the phases of disaster risk management, uh, depending on what phase you want to target. We'll go into this a little bit more in detail uh, as the session continues, but that's going to be our basis, our skeleton, if you will, of our content creation uh, process. Uh, so as far as information goes, uh, you can think of it as what action does the content promote and what information is important to the target audience. Let's move on. So first let's talk about risk communication. Uh, risk communication, uh, I would like to define by quoting one of my uh, friends and colleagues, uh, Andrew McElroy, from communica a communication specialist of the United Nations Office for Disaster Risk Reduction, or UNISDR. And he was saying that the best disaster information is usable, useful, and used. So what does this mean? This means that the information that you're providing people, they have to be able to understand it, and they have to understand it enough where they could put it into practice. So this is why it's even more so important to understand your audience, and if they are, first of all, using social media, and if they can understand the message that you are, you are giving them. That's why content creation is so important. So let the audience be your guide with content creation. First, identify your target audience, then provide them with information that they will be able to understand and hopefully use uh, to keep themselves better prepared uh, in disaster situations. Let's move on to the next slide. So let's start with a recap of understanding your audience. It's important to know which social media channels your target audience is using. This could be Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, LinkedIn, Google+, there's a variety. Uh, that's why your social media strategy is so important and it's important to identify your target audience beforehand. So having data on the social media use wherever you're working is particularly important. The more you know about your target audience, the more you'll able to craft your content to better suit them. Let's move on to the next slide. So let's briefly talk about, before we fully get into content creation, the uh, four phases of disaster risk management. Now these four phases are mitigation, preparedness, response, and recovery. Now it's a common misconception that all of these phases happen in order. When a disaster isn't going on, then you have mitigations operations going on, such as maybe building a flood canal to pre prevent flooding. When a disaster is known to be coming, then you have your preparedness phase. Brief, or immediately afterwards, you have your response phase, where you have response efforts, and then you have your recovery phase afterwards. Now this is a common misconception because even though it seems like this is how it works, all of these phases are actually occurring at the same time. Now this is because, for example, maybe there was a disaster a number of years ago and recovery is still taking place. But while this recovery is happening, uh, mitigation efforts are also taking place at the same time. While these things are going on, another has hazard events and another hazard event uh, comes along and then preparedness and response measures happen as well. So even though we're using these four phases to direct the use of social media, they should not be thought of as separate. Any of these messages can be used uh, at any time. It'll be obvious when you're talking about a disaster event, that means, that means one is soon to occur. 
but you'll understand how all of these messages can be applied, especially messages that have to do with keep, keeping people safe from a particular disaster. You could send them, send them out at any time. Let's move on to the next slide. So creating content for the mitigation phase. Now this is probably one of the most challenging times to create messages related to disaster risk management on social media. And the reason for that being is because this is when a disaster event is not on everyone's mind. It's when it's a time of peace, if you will, uh, maybe a time of uh, recovery after when has happened quite some time ago, with recovery efforts are going on. Uh, but during this time, people are not generally concerned with the hazard of a disa potential disastrous event. And it's because of this that it's so hard for people to educate themselves on disaster preparedness. And this is why it's up to wherever you may be working or however you may be using social media to use this phase and use social media in order to keep a disaster safety in people's minds uh, to help them understand what they should do in case a event should occur. Now, how can you keep disaster events in people's mind, minds when a disaster isn't necessarily present? Well, you can do this by reflecting on past events. Maybe it's a one month anniversary, a three month anniversary, five month, one year anniversary, uh, but this is one strategy you can use to keep uh, disasters and their impacts in people's minds. And that's by reflecting on things that have happened before. Uh, it'll seem relevant, relevant to your audience uh, and it'll help them remember that preparation is in fact important. Uh, you could also look at uh, mitigation projects such as major products that are meant to uh, reduce the impact of uh, disasters whenever they may occur. Maybe your city is making the storm drains a little bit wider so they could handle heavier rain once it uh, rains during certain points of the season. Uh, these type of efforts uh, are very effective, or I should say can be very effective, and it's important that the public uh, know that they're happening in order to keep them safe, and it, it's, they're being done for their benefit. So while uh, other media might not be able to cover this for one reason or another, and that's fine. Social media can be used uh, to keep these topics uh, fresh in people's, in people's minds. Then also it's important during uh, this time to develop social media content that elicits a response from your followers. In this way, you can create a two-way conversation and have your audience become more involved, which uh, they tend to appreciate. It doesn't have to be much, but it could be something as simple as just asking their opinion on a certain topic. This will at least keep the information flow exciting and uh, keep them engaged. Even though social media moves very quickly and often people may not engage in this two-way communication, it's always a nice idea to invite them uh, to a conversation. So those are a couple ways that we can create social media content uh, for the mitigation phase. Let's move on to the preparedness phase. Creating content for the preparedness phase of disaster risk management. Now this is where we can see that content creation becomes actually a little bit easier. Now why is that? That's because a disaster is uh, likely to happen very soon and because of this people tend to naturally want more information on this disastrous event or potentially disastrous event. Usually the traditional media is already covering it in TV, broadcast, radio. So it's social media's role or it's one of social media's role to keep this information going at a wider level. Maybe if someone isn't reading about it online or reading about it in a newspaper or listening it to it on the radio, social media is just another tool to help keep people informed. 
Now, the listening aspect of social media is very important during this phase because sometimes people can let you know what information they'd like or, are, or what information they want to know. Some of this can include traffic, what bridges are available or not available, maybe there's been some closures. Uh, this is all information that, are, that is on people's minds, stuff they would like to know, how much rainfall is expected to occur, when the storm is expected to hit, when it's supposed to hit, what time frame. This is all information that people look for uh, immediately before a disaster, and it's information that can be shared at, on social media. And it's information that can be directed towards a specific person on social media. Again, creating this two-way communication. Again, interacting with your audience is especially important and it should be uh, engaged in. So another thing that you can share during the disaster preparedness phase are good practices for the storm. Maybe it's a uh, storm that can cause flooding. Then you can share material on good practices that can be done during a situation that may cause floods. Because the event that is incoming is known either by weather reports or it's some type of uh, disastrous situation that you have some warning of, you'll be able to create content that reflects what people need to know based on that certain situation. This is one reason why uh, content creation may be a little bit easier during the uh, mitigation phase, but both are equally as important. So this is why the disaster preparedness phase is uh, very important, uh, just as the others are. But during this phase, you could find specific information to help guide your social media use. Let's move on to the next slide. Creating content for the response phase. This is when the event is currently going on and people are often in need of assistance. So during this phase, you can continue to share good practice techniques, but it should be kept in mind that people may not be monitoring social media from the place where the disaster is currently hitting the hardest. Some people might be in their homes using social media on their cell phones, but there's gonna be a lot of calls for information from surrounding areas to understand where is, where is being the most affected and who is in need of assistance. That's why it's very important for social media uh, to monitor uh, social media and other forms of social media to pr provide people with this important information such as which areas are being hit the hardest. For people using social media in the places that are getting hit the hardest, sometimes, and this happens quite often actually, uh, when it's um, strategized beforehand, is people are actually asking for help. When I say strategized beforehand, usually they have uh, some type of knowledge of a way to call for help on, on social media. This isn't always the case, but uh, it happens as, as well. Another important part of creating content for the response phase of disaster risk management is people have been known to ask for help on social media. And even though uh, it's not recommended that you promise to help them if you are not really sure of how to do so or you don't have any plan in place to help that person, you could at least engage with them on social media provide them with some emotional support, telling them that you are aware of their situation and you, you are doing all you can to coordinate some type of help for them. Now, it's important that you don't make these promises if you have no way of doing this. And when I say no way of doing this, I mean no plan set up beforehand that knows that help can reach this person. So, because you never wanna make empty promises, that's one of the big no-nos on social media and that will cause your followers to uh, not trust you. But by all means, you could engage with that person and uh, try your best to make sure that the people who can coordinate some type of rescue uh, is there to support. So this is, all, this is all the more 
reason why monitoring social media uh, during the response phase is also very important. Now you might see a pattern here. During the mitigation phase, both content creation and listening is very important. But the listening aspect or paying attention to your audience, listening to what messages they're putting out is especially important during the preparedness and response phases. And this is because it's when people that, that don't normally use social media are on social media trying to call for some type of help or have their uh, situation be known in some way to try to uh, get some sort of assistance. We're going to talk a little bit more in detail later about some countries who are um, doing this type of rescue through social media or rescue by listening to social me media uh, very well. Uh, another thing you can do during the response phase is you can uh, share trusted local sources of, of information. Maybe you come across a fire department who is sharing uh, very useful information on uh, social media and it should be encouraged that you share uh, either their website or their social media channels uh, for other updates. This is how uh, social media users actually help each other out uh, for both uh, cross-promotion purposes and also to help their listeners get their, or their audience, get the information that they're looking for. Let's move on to the next slide. So, creating content for the recovery phase. During the recovery phase, you could share resources documenting damage and losses. After a major disaster event, people are always interested in the extent of the damage, uh, what areas were most hit, what's being done to help for people that may still be in need of assistance, or what's being done to help people who are in need of assistance financially. And during the recovery phase, this is a good time for calls to aid. While it might also help during the response phase, during the recovery phase, there's often a call to action for uh, donations or other ways that people from outside the immediate uh, disaster area can lend their support. This can be done by linking trusted, it's important that the source that you're sharing is a trusted donation site, uh, to your followers, or uh, you can share maybe shelter information where people can continue to go to get uh, help after a disaster situation, areas where people go, can go to donate items, uh, any information that people will still find useful in order to lend their support to the people affected uh, by the disaster. It's also important during the recovery phase to reflect on what worked and what didn't work during a disaster. Maybe before the disaster there was a certain area designated as a shelter, and maybe during the disaster that shelter that was designated uh, received too many people, and some people did not have uh, a bed to sleep on, they had to sleep on the floor, or some other situation that shows that maybe there could be a better location that could be selected in the future. Highlighting uh, these shortcomings is actually a positive way to make sure that the next time there is a disaster event, the community can operate even better than the previous one. That being said, maybe a little bit farther down the line, social media can cover how donations were being spent can make an infographic or some type of information uh, resource that shows people exactly where donations were spent, how their do donations were used, and this can really give people the motivation to uh, donate and lend their support for future disasters. And this is something that maybe um, people wouldn't hear of unless it's posted on social media, depending on the story, of course. It's also very important to keep an eye on uh, traditional media and to make sure that all of their stories of people being affected by the disaster are also um, read or listened to. And social media can be very used about 
uh, pushing those messages uh, even further uh, on the social media sphere. During the recovery phase, it's also very important to provide um, psychosocial support to those that are affected. This can be done by uh, sharing the locations of where people can get help if they're still uh, shooken up over the disaster, if they're still maybe losing sleep over the disaster, which is actually more common than uh, people might think. And social media is a very uh, good way to spread these stories of people who are affected and to make a request for people to open up certain facilities to help uh, people who may just need someone to talk to. Social media can also be used to share stories of people that were affected by the storm and to show how they're recovering and how their life is uh, going back to normal um, or striving to go back to normal one, one day at a time as a way to bring hope to others who may be uh, affected as well. So let's move on to the next slide. So in the social media reference document, you can find the following information. More information on content creation for each phase of disaster risk management. You could also find some interesting case studies that show how social media has been used during a disaster. While maybe you can't mirror these strategies uh, exactly how they've been used before, it's important to have an understanding of what has been working while using social media during disaster situations. One very good example, as I mentioned briefly before, is the unified hashtag policy in the Philippines. And this is a very important social media policy because what hashtags do is, is it's a way to make content searchable on social media by adding a hashtag or a pound sign uh, before one word or multi-word phrase with no spaces. And then it makes this phrase a searchable piece of information. So in the Philippines, what they did is they took the local name of the storm, so the hashtag and then the local name of the storm, then capital PH afterwards then all the information out on social media related to that storm should have that hashtag included. Now, why is this so important? It's important because it takes all of the information that's out there about the storm and it narrows it down into an easy and searchable information resource. They also started a hashtag called rescue PH. So hashtag rescue capital P, capital H, for people who are in need of assistance. They saw how useful social media was as a mechanism to call for help. So they created this policy so that if, if anyone is ever in need of assistance, they can use this hashtag to make sure their message or in hopes that their message goes to the appropriate authorities that can provide them support. So they have a lot of background on their rescue PH hashtag that allows them to coordinate uh, rescue efforts. Uh, so there has been a lot uh, put into this, this policy uh, and has been very effective and it's one that, or something like it. So they have put a lot of thought into this rescue PH hashtag and it's one that can be utilized in other countries uh, around the world as well. And the reason for this is because what the hashtag does, it takes the massive amount of information and it narrows it down into a uh, searchable topic, one that can be used for rescue situations. So let's have a recap of what was covered in the content creation section. Uh, we talked about identifying your target audience and how it's a crucial part of your social media strategy. We talked about effective risk communication, simply put, as being information that is useful, usable, and used. And social media 
or how social media should be used throughout all phases of disaster risk management. Now, all these phases are going on uh, at the same time, but there's certain times where you can provide information that has to do with one phase uh, or the other, depending on the objective of that information or how you want your audience to react to that information. Remember that content creation is a little bit more difficult during the mitigation and recovery phases. And this is okay, it just means it might take a little bit more time to create these messages. But during the preparedness and response phase, you could actually let both the potentially disastrous event guide your content creation and you could also get help from your audience since they will be helping you create your content based on the needs that they are requesting for. So thank you very much. That's the end of the session, and we'll see you during the next one. Thank you.